According to official data, the Soviet spacecraft Soyuz 18 went into flight on May 24, 1975. The crew included two cosmonauts, Vitaly Sebastianov and Pyotr Klimek. The ship docked at the Salyut 4 orbital station. The crew stayed on board for two months. On July 26, the astronauts returned safely to Earth, and that could have been the end of it. However, not many people know that Klimchuk and Sebastianov's ship had a slightly different name for the initiates, Soyuz 18B. What happened to Soyuz 18 it was strictly forbidden to space industry workers. No one knew that the flight of this ship added to one of the dramatic pages of Soviet astronautics. The crew experienced terrible and difficult moments. No one else had such an ordeal. Vasily Lazarev was appointed pilot of the ship, and Oleg Makarov was appointed onboard engineer. Back in 1966, Makarov was selected to join the team that was preparing to land on the moon. Unfortunately, this project was soon abandoned. The Soviet Union lost the lunar race to the Americans. Lazarev and Makarov, who made an excellent crew, were transferred to other space programs. According to experts, it was one of the best-trained crews, capable of performing the most difficult tasks. In January 1975, Makarov and Lazarev were appointed as doubles for the crew of Soyuz 17, Georgi Grechko and Alexei Gubarev. According to tradition, the understudies were to go into space next. The launch of Soyuz 18 was scheduled for April 5, 1975. After launch, the separation of the first stage took place successfully. Then the payload fairing was jettisoned. The separation of the second stage should have taken place on the fourth minute of the flight. However, the crew felt that the rocket began to rock violently. The amplitude increased with every second. The astronauts realized that the carrier, having failed to reach the designed orbit, failed. Then the emergency system went off, which blew away the re-entry vehicle. The accident occurred at an altitude of 200 kilometers, that is, practically in space. The apparatus descended in unguided mode, in other words, the astronauts simply fell out of space. Under such conditions, the crew experienced tremendous overload, which posed an enormous threat to life. According to recollections of Vasily Lazarev, he could not move, the sensations were such, as if a car ran over his chest. Later Lazarev also recalled. Once on a centrifuge I transferred a load of 10G to my partner. After that, I saw many red dots on his back. I drew the attention of the doctor accompanying us to this. The doctor calmly answered, it was a bursting of blood vessels, the same thing on your back. During the fall the crew felt a load of 20G. Later, specialists analyzing telemetry noted that the load at some point reached a monstrous 26G. At that point, the astronauts went blind for some time, after which a cardiac arrest was recorded. The astronauts regained consciousness after the parachute system went off. Incredibly, their bodies were able to withstand the inhuman load. Although, had they lasted a little longer, the crew of Union 18 would have been dead. Coming to his senses, Lazarev saw that the flight engineer was shouting something to him. However, nothing was clear, for some time, hearing was completely lost. The astronauts tried to contact the mission control center, they needed to understand where the descent module would land. Communication was very poor. The crew could not hear the mission control center. But in the MCC, they could clearly hear what was going on and what the astronauts were talking about. Oleg, where are we landing? asked the ship's commander. Apparently, to China or the Pacific Ocean, replied the flight engineer. Then he swore and spoke very unflatteringly about the work of the engines of the second stage. He did not know at the time that Valentin Glushko, chief designer of space systems, had heard his words. Hearing the flight engineer's criticism, Glushko became furious. 
With a flushed face he immediately ordered to switch off broadcasting and, not being shy in his words, promised that he would do everything to prevent Makarov from flying into space again. According to the crew's calculations, if the second stage failed, they would have had to crash land in Altai if they were unlucky in China, with which the Soviet leadership had very strained relations at the time. If the third stage failed, the crew would have fallen into the Pacific Ocean. The landing site was lucky, and although the cosmonauts landed in an inaccessible area southwest of gorno altiusk it was Soviet territory. It would seem that everything was behind us, but suddenly a new threat appeared. The point is that according to the instructions, the crew should have shot off the parachute after landing. However, at this point the rescuers contacted the astronauts, who gave the crew an unofficial instruction, first look around very carefully, and then shoot the parachute. Specialists, who learned by bitter experience, knew very well when landing in mountainous areas. After firing the parachute the descent vehicle could roll down a slope or fall into a gorge. This saved the lives of Makarov and Lazarev. They got out and looked around. The descent vehicle was lying on a mountain slope. There was a huge chasm very close by. The only reason the parachute had not rolled away was that it was entangled in the treetops. Snow was deep and the temperature dropped to minus 7 degrees. Rescuers could not get close to the Lazarev and Makarov crew. After the monstrous landing the crew now had to survive on the ground. The helicopter that flew up to the landing point, after repeated attempts, was unable to pick up the cosmonauts. Another accident followed. A group of rescuers attempting to reach the freezing crew was hit by an avalanche. Now it was them who had to be rescued. A day later, one of the Air Force helicopters, which was not part of the search party, at the cost of incredible effort and risk, was finally able to pick up the astronauts and take them to safety. This story turned out to be classified for many years. It was not customary in the Soviet Union to sanctify failed launches and accidents. According to recollections of eyewitnesses, as soon as they realized that the flight did not go according to plan, they ordered to remove all journalists from Baikonur. For the second flight, the cosmonauts were awarded the gold star of the hero of the Soviet Union. However, due to the fact that it was customary not to talk about this incident, Makarov and Lazarev were only given the Order of Lenin. It was as if the flight had never happened. The number of the wrecked ship Soyuz 18 was taken away and assigned to the next spacecraft. In reality, however, everything looked quite different. That flight had not passed without leaving a trace. The astronauts started to have health problems. Lazarev never went into space again. For health reasons he was dismissed from the armed forces and expelled from the cosmonaut corps. He died in 1990. At that time he was only 62 years old. Oleg Makarov experienced serious heart problems. In 1998 he had an operation, but could not recover. In 2003, he died of a heart attack. The dramatic story and the heroic flight of 1975 remain unknown to most people to this day. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.